Sacramento Kings have had a very good week. If you look at it from the fact that, hey, they beat an Orlando Magic team. They beat a Toronto Raptors team that has been playing really well. And yes, they did lose to the Miami Heat, but that was in a one-point heartbreaker. They were one shot away, Caleb, from winning three games this week and being 3-0 and on the week. Um, I want to recap some things from this week. De'Aaron Fox has been an absolute stud. His shooting has looked a lot better. His three-point shooting has looked much, much better, especially from the preseason where he was struggling a lot. Um, I'm very excited from what I'm seeing from De'Aaron. I didn't think that his shooting would improve as much as it is, but he's done a really good job. So that's one thing I, I definitely want to point out. Um, another guy that has played really well, Caleb, is Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald had 29 points against the Orlando Magic. Um, against the Toronto Raptors, he had 22 points. And against the Miami Heat last night, um, he had 18 points. So, again, I think a lot of what you're seeing now is Buddy finding his rhythm and his shots finally falling. That's huge for Buddy Heald because he has been struggling a lot this year, Caleb. Mm-hmm. And I really do like him. I like him coming out, you know, finding his role, finding something to get going. We mentioned him earlier as a trade candidate for the Mavericks, but, you know, I, the Celtics, we have a TP. I wouldn't be against it. We need shooting. And he get, yeah, and he's a wing. He can play wing depth. Like, that could be big for us. I'm just saying it, Danny. I don't know if you're watching. You probably don't watch because you're probably a cocksucker faggot. But I'm just saying, Danny, I don't know if you're watching, but you should listen to our podcast. We throw out great ideas. You should really think about it. Yeah, I mean, we've gotten more views than Danny Ainge's probably ever gotten eyes laid on him in, in his life. Um, the Kings have played well, though, Caleb, and they have looked surprisingly good. They were one shot away from a four-game win streak, and like I said, going 3-0 and on the week. What do you think right now are, with the Kings? Now, I have some trouble with the Kings because of what's been going on, and we're going to get to uh, the whole Marvin Bagley situation, which – Seems to be a weekly thing. God damn it. Why? Why does this happen to us? Why does this only happen to Kings fans? I don't know. Um, but we're going to get to Marvin in a second. Buddy and Harrison have been playing really, really well. Rashawn Holmes has been playing really well. Those are three guys, Caleb, that have been playing, I think, exceptional this year. Harrison started off really strong. And then, as I mentioned last week, he had about four out of five games where he was playing mediocre. I mean, he's found it back. He's found his rhythm back. I, again, against Orlando, he had 21 points, four assists, five rebounds. Then against the Raptors, he was going insane. He had 26 points, seven rebounds, five assists. And then last night against Miami, he didn't play so well, but he did a good job defensively on Jimmy Butler. He had 11 points, three rounds, and two assists. Um, but I thought he did a decent job. What do you think right now the Kings should do? Now, I look at the Kings, right, and – to me, we're in that mediocre purgatory, that draft purgatory, where I don't know where the Kings are going to end up. We're 11, eight and eleven on the week, or we're eight and eleven right now, um, and they're what a game out from the playoffs. We have a better record than the Dallas Mavericks right now, which again, these are outlier numbers. I don't believe that's going to stay the case two months from now, but that's how it is right now. And and we have a better record than the Miami Heat. So when you see these things. What do you think the Kings should do? I, I look at that roster right now, and I have trouble seeing guys like Buddy Heald, Harrison Barnes, Rashawn Holmes playing so well and not getting traded because I don't know if they're the future of this team. They're, they're not the future of this team. And that's 60% of your starting lineup, Caleb. So what do you do right now if you're Monty McNair? Do you keep him? Do you keep going and, and allow what's happening and just allow them to play well and, and hope that you can maybe make a playoff spot? Or – do you see what you can get out of them? I mean, I know that Monty's trying to see what he can get out of Harrison and Buddy eventually, but is it too late to wait for the trade deadline? That's really where I'm asking. I just think that now it's one of those things where you guys are close to the playoffs. Like you said, like a game out or something. You Do you make the push for it? Because I think like what you said, it's kind of too late to really – I don't know. It's – it's hard to say because this draft is deep. Like, there's a lot of talent in this draft. But at the same time, you guys are really close to the playoffs. And for a team that hasn't been in the playoffs in a really long time, for a first-year GM going into that situation, it would mean so much to a lot of the fans. Like, I understand it be, it, 
definitely long-term success, way smarter to tank this year, right? We know this. But short-term, getting the love and, you know what I mean, the commitment from the fan base to push them to the playoffs in year one, it would do a lot for him and a lot for the trust amongst the fans. But at the same time, it's just smarter long-term to tank and get that top pick. But at the same time, I don't think that you guys are bad enough to really get that. And I think with where you guys are sitting, maybe pushing for the playoffs is a smart move. You guys were close two years ago. And a lot of people thought that last year you guys were going to get that spot, but it didn't happen. You guys are right there. You guys have been right there for the past two years. Maybe Monty sees that and says, you know what? I got to make the move now and push for it. Maybe he does, or maybe he says it's smarter just to tank and try to get a better pick. For me personally, if I'm Monty McNair and I'm heading into that GM room and I'm saying, look, we're a game out of the playoffs. We Like, say this is trade deadline. You guys are still a game out. Say he walks in there and says, I can't trade away the guys. I got to make the push for the playoffs now. Maybe you guys are buyers at the deadline. Or maybe you guys aren't in, entirely sellers, but you guys maybe move one of Holmes, Barnes, somebody. But I don't think it'll be like a complete three of the three of the five starters are going to be gone. You know what I mean? Like it might be one player gone. Yeah. I don't think all of them will be gone, but you did mention by the trade deadline. Now, if the Kings make a push this year, I think that's a big mistake. And I don't see the Kings doing that because of the fact that right now, yes, they have been winning some games, but a lot of their games have been against the Eastern conference Mm -hmm. against struggling teams. Yeah. They beat teams like Toronto um, and they've beaten teams like what the Knicks, um, they beat Denver early on in the year, but we're not seeing that same team. And the Kings definitely look a lot better. I will say that they have improved. Um, they look kind of like they have closer to the beginning of the year, but still that team has a lot of, you know, like a lot of holes in their team. Right. And to me, keeping Harrison, keeping buddy is, is very hard because it's like, you don't need to make a playoff push. There's no point to it right now. You have both those guys are not in the future. Buddy Hield is not in the future. Harrison Barnes is not in the future. I feel like Monty McNair is going to want his own guy in the draft, just like he wanted Tyrese Halliburton. And right now, Tyrese, speaking of him, he has been playing very well. And I wanted to get to him, Caleb. Uh, the past week, he played. Yes. Let's throw out the idea that maybe Monty McNair is a really good drafting GM. Right. Let's throw out that idea. Let's throw out the idea that you guys don't really need to tank to get a top player in the class. Then what's the decision? You know what I mean? Like maybe he's confident that next year he can find exact same value later lottery or early or like late teens. Maybe he thinks that his best way is maybe let the roster ride out and draft wherever he lands. Cause he did that last year and he walked away with a guy who's a top three rookie this year. Yeah, that is true. But I will say, I wouldn't put too much weight into one draft, right? And it's not one entire draft. I mean, we haven't seen much of Jemias Ramsey and Robert Woodard. They both get sent to the G League, um, which is good for them. I, I want to see them develop. I do. I want teams to use the G League more often. Yeah, I do wish that they were able to play some minutes with the Kings because I think keeping guys like Justin James, um, may, maybe Kyle Guy is, is decent, but like keeping those guys, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but yeah, it's tough. 